2020 has been a heck of a year so far, but at least there's been no shortage of quality video games. From remakes of classics to long-anticipated sequels to the best indie releases around, these are the best games of the year so far. What if I could offer you something you don't know you want? Yep, Half-Life is finally back, and in all its VR glory, it is nothing less than breathtaking. Set five years before the events of Half-Life 2, Half-Life Alex features familiar locations such as City 17 and the Combine facilities, as well as the iconic, ghastly alien creatures threatening all of humanity. All of this is beautifully rendered in VR too, offering levels of immersion that genuinely push the boundaries of the medium. This time, you play not as a franchise star Gordon Freeman, but his collaborator Alex Vance. Alex and her father, Eli, are founding members of the Human Resistance pushing back against the Combine Collective following the Black Mesa incident. Despite one or two gameplay hiccups, the physics and environment detail in Half-Life Alex are genuinely stunning. This is no blocky, jerky virtual reality game where you're left constantly struggling with the interface. Everything is as smooth as you could want it to be, and the detail in the graphics is absolutely stunning. The game honestly feels like a benchmark for the future of virtual reality. But beware, despite the glowing reviews and critical acclaim, some gamers have reported playing Half-Life Alex makes them physically ill. Motion sickness is a problem that 40 to 70% of VR users reportedly face. So bear this in mind before you step into this hype a realistic sci-fi world. Another iconic game gets further reimagined in Doom Eternal, which incorporates some fresh RPG and storytelling elements into the frenzied shooter action you've come to expect from the Doom franchise. In Eternal, you play as a Doom Slayer, and your single-minded need to pursue and destroy the terrifying creatures from hell is as strong as ever. Your base is a fortress of Doom, from where you can launch into various missions and campaigns and face some unspeakably horrible monsters too. Aside from the heart-pounding action, you now get a dash of strategy in the mix that's sure to enhance the game's replay value. Plus, there are weapon upgrades, skill mastery, passive bonuses, a new progression system, a fresh soundtrack, new and classic demons to slay, and new environments to keep you occupied. All in all, it's a worthy successor to the 2016 reboot of Doom. The single-player campaign of Doom Eternal is relatively short, at about 15 hours, but the game also features a battle mode multiplayer version that should keep you happy for eons. Go raise hell! In times like these, you can hardly blame people for wanting a little simplicity in their lives. Enter Animal Crossing New Horizons, a game in which you can escape to a desert island and set up your own personal paradise. The bright colors and cartoon figures of New Horizons add a welcome dose of whimsy to this incredibly addictive and utterly delightful game, creating just the right kind of treatment for these troubled times. Ah, <sighs> that's better. Anyway, the basic gameplay remains the same, and like other games in the franchise, you're expected to set up a home somewhere in the wilderness. This time, however, the game takes place on a deserted island. Otherwise, the low-pressured, open-ended, exploration-based gaming will be familiar to Animal Crossing fans. The playable character is a customizable human who fills their days settling into the island, exploring, and making friends. From selling creepy crawlies to pay for your house to planting trees and decorating your living space with bugs and shells, there's more than plenty to keep you occupied. New Horizons also introduces a new DIY crafting system packed with recipes for wearing wearables, housewares, and tools, making this one of the franchise's most jam-packed and exciting installments. The new Ori game deserves to be lauded for its beautiful cover artwork alone. But in case that hasn't enticed you, this adventure platformer is a sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest, and continues Ori's search for their true destiny. And just like its predecessor, the follow-up has been showered with critical acclaim. The open-world exploration of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, set to a fine new musical score, takes you through some breathtaking 2D landscapes, ranging from grim marshlands to psychedelic underground worlds to alpine forests topped with snow-covered peaks. As part of the bargain, you'll cross paths with dangerous enemies and a few annoying pests, but also make new friends and allies that can show you around their wonderful worlds. The exploration gets a little more intense as the game progresses, and Ori develops more skills and powers, and the puzzle-solving element of the game further ramps up the challenge. Nonetheless, a full playthrough will likely take little more than 12 or so hours, but you'll doubtless be enthralled for every last second. Is it a game? Is it a collaborative platform? Is it an animation or music studio? Or is it just a development tool? Whatever you want to call it, Dreams is an outrageous and inspired piece of software. Essentially, this title is one step up from the world that developer Media Molecule presented in its previous PlayStation game Little Big Planet, 
which allowed players to design and share new adventures. Dreams expanded on this concept, letting you create to your heart's content not just games, but music, art, films, or anything in between. You can then share your creations with the Dreamiverse community. Alternatively, you can choose to play one of the hundreds of player-created games of pretty much every conceivable genre. The question is, could Dreams usher in a new era of gaming? Thanks to Media Molecule, anyone can be a game developer without having to invest in expensive equipment or training. And with new games releasing into the Dreamiverse every day, at the very least, Dreams offers a whole new way to experience gaming. If there's one thing you'll find in many of the best games of the year, it'll be the environments. 2020's releases feature some of the most exciting and engaging worlds in gaming, and Team Ninja's PlayStation 4 title, Neo 2, is no exception. What sets this action RPG title apart is a sheer amount of customization available. Players take on the role of a half-human, half-yokai, and apart from deciding what your character looks like, there's an incredible amount of tinkering you can do with just about anything character-related, including stats, weapons, skills, magic, equipment, and even home decor. Story-wise, Neo 2 starts off as a prequel to Neo, though the plot eventually winds around the events in the previous game and finishes after the end of that game's narrative. It's not easy either, and you should expect to work hard to beat Neo 2. The combat is challenging enough, but some of the submissions can be downright inhuman. Toughen up though, because the reward here is more than worth the work, and Neo 2 is a rip-roaring ride from start to finish. That Final Fantasy VII still holds a place in the hearts of gamers over two decades after it was released is a testament to the game's masterful storytelling. And while the essential elements of the plot remain mostly the same, the remake is a breathtaking blend of narrative prowess and modern gaming technology. Exploring the little details of characters and locations in ways that were never previously possible, Final Fantasy VII Remake offers a fresh look and experience on Cloud's world. Don't expect an easy stroll through Midgar, however, as the combat is fairly challenging. The cinematic cutscenes are stunning, though, and Square Enix has reimagined many of the original's familiar environments. You'll also discover never-before-seen side missions, new characters that add color and depth to the tale, plus a deeper look at the backgrounds of some of the main cast. It's a must-play for fans of the original, and newcomers to the franchise are bound to love it, too. This is gonna be so much fun. You'll see. Hunt Down is the throwback to the old-timey arcade shooter you never knew you wanted. Non-stop mayhem, breathless motion, and level after level of bad guys to shoot down, all of these elements combine to make this side-scroller a genuine delight. The setting is a cyberpunk-themed 16-bit landscape that brings just the right dash of retro to proceedings, with a fantastic original soundtrack to set the mood. The gameplay isn't exactly rocket science, especially if you're used to 2D shooters. Playing as one of three different characters, you're tasked with cleaning the streets of an 80s-style gangster-run city. There are lots of baddies to shoot, plenty of weapons to be acquired, Fired, unlimited ammo, and some real nasty bosses to take down. It's not easy though, and the game gets progressively more difficult, but after some time, your character picks up some neat skills and more weapons too. The key to survival is to keep moving, running, jumping, and taking cover as you plow through your enemies. And there's even more to it than that, like secret stashes and easter eggs to find, and a co-op mode to team up with friends. In a word, Hunt Down is a blast. The Last of Us Part 2 is set five years after the events of its iconic predecessor, and this time around, you're guiding Ellie through the post-apocalyptic landscape. The story is mainly one of revenge, set in what remains of Seattle after a pandemic has turned humans into weird, zombie-like fungus creatures. The world-building and design are superlative, the gameplay is solid, and the experience is topped off with a complex, layered, and dark storyline. As a reviewer for Games Radar put it, The Last of Us 2 is exceptional, and quite possibly the best game I've played this generation. Some people had a few issues with the game, not least the fact that it can go a little heavy on the grittiness at times, but there's little doubt for many this is one of the very best games of 2020. Your success in Desperados 3 depends entirely on how well you deal with failure, and that's because you'll be failing a lot. Like, a lot. In fact, as US Gamer puts it, Desperados 3 finds its foundation in failure. So yeah, you're pretty much expected to screw up in this game, but that doesn't make it any less fun to play. Touted as a true successor to Me 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 Games Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun, Desperados 3 is actually a prequel to the original Desperados game, making this a great place to get started with the series. Set in the Wild West, your band of five playable characters each come with their own special skills. On top of that, you can use a variety of in-game objects to plan and execute your moves. It's a load of fun. Just don't get too frustrated if things go awry. After all, failure is the best teacher. Let's hope he's hungover too. 
Despite storytelling, it's almost always a good thing to find in a game. But in the case of the survival horror remake Resident Evil 3, the trade-off is a very short game, one that clocks in at roughly 5 hours. It's a pity, because Capcom's reimagining of its 1999 title is genuinely great fun, while it lasts. The story is more or less the same. Jill Valentine is on the run from zombie-infested Raccoon City, with a horrific nemesis on her trail. But the remake shaves off many of the side stories of the original, including the multiple endings that gave it so much replay value. Then again, the game does an excellent job of recreating the tense, horror-filled atmosphere of the original, and throws in some gorgeous updated graphics to boot. To give it some credit, the game also features a 4v1 multiplayer, and even though there is limited replay value, it's still about as good a remake on the survival horror classic as you could ever hope for. Despite all appearances, much of what goes into building a successful racing career happens behind the scenes and F1 2020 appears to be the most accurate and comprehensible representation of the complex processes behind building a racing champion. For example, the new My Team mode allows you to take on the role of driver-manager, create your team, and craft your racing empire from the ground up. You can choose a sponsor, select a logo, and team colors, pick an engine supplier, hire staff and teammates, build your own facilities, and more. All in all, F1 2020 allows you to micromanage just about every aspect of your career. Or not, as there's always a career mode for players who are more interested in the guts and glory of the racing world. On top of all that, Codemasters have added new difficulty levels and playing modes, and there should be something for everyone here. Whether you're a veteran on the virtual F1 circuit, or a newbie taking your first wobbly drive on the circuit. The game includes all the official teams and drivers from the 2020 F1 Championship too, as well as content from the 2019 F2. In addition, players have access to 16 classic cars, 2 new circuits, and novel mechanics to make driving more realistic. There's also an online multiplayer mode, and split-screen racing finally makes a comeback after almost 15 years. If nothing else, F1 2020 should keep you busy well into 2021. Ghost of Tsushima is set in Japan's medieval heyday, during the 13th century. You play as the last surviving samurai, waging a lone and conventional war to take back your homeland, a war in which everything you live by is called into question. Aside from a great premise and story, the game features an incredible open world for samurai Jin Sakai to roam in. You can enter each building, climb rooftops, and explore the entire world. But despite the incredible landscapes, you shouldn't go in expecting the usual action-adventure fare. Instead, develop a sucker punch opted for a more visual kind of storytelling. What this means is you no longer have the tedium of adventure housekeeping, like picking up loot and performing other mundane in-game actions, allowing you to immerse yourself in the game's world and narrative. As an added bonus, Ghost of Tsushima offers a Kurosawa mode, named for the legendary filmmaker, which renders the world in black and white like the classic samurai movies of old. It's not every day that a game is declared a hit even before it releases, but Ghost of Tsushima won over critics before it even hit stores. Give it a go, and you might just find out why. There aren't many games quite like Microsoft Flight Simulator. It might sound cliche, but it's probably more apt to call this an experience than a game. Of course, everyone knows how it works. Flight Simulator allows you to take to the skies in a variety of aircrafts, flying over a remarkably modeled planet Earth. And everything here is modeled on realism, down to the last detail. In fact, Flight Simulator is so close to the real thing that there are more than a few stories out there of people flying actual planes after only training in this game. All in all, the game boasts 37,000 airports, 2 million cities, 1.5 billion buildings, as well as what seems to be a totally authentic model of the world to explore. Flight Simulator allows almost unprecedented freedom too, and gives you the chance to do it for yourself or let the AI do most of the flying, while you sit back and take in the sights. Your choice, Captain. If historical strategy games are your jam, then you're bound to love Panzer Corps 2. It's a strategy game of the highest order, putting you in control of a campaign during World War II and forcing you to outsmart your foes. It's essentially a hex-based strategy board game that looks super pretty and lets you customize scenarios as a way to keep the challenge going for several playthroughs. This is truly a game for the strategy obsessed rewarding players who know the ins and outs of every unit and mechanic, and love diving into the more historical elements of strategy games. If you're looking for something casual, however, this might not be your speed, as PC Gamer warns, If you do not care to learn your Sturmgeschirts from your Panzerkampfwagen, do not panic. But instead, turn and move quickly in the opposite direction. It might not be the most innovative game around, but Panzer Corps 3 has perfected the formula and looks really good at the same time. If you want to channel your inner general pattern and test your metal with some real-world action, look no further than this. 
Self-referential humor can be a tricky beast, and it's very easy to get too cute and fall into the realm of cringe. That goes tenfold for video games, where repeating a section might mean repeating a joke, and that rarely gets a second laugh. That said, genuinely funny games are a wonderful thing, and Lair of the Clockwork God is exactly that. On top of that, it's also a pretty fun genre mashup. Lair of the Clockwork God is made by the same indie team that created Ben There, Dan That, and Time Gentlemen, Please. It features two characters who are stuck in opposite genres, one a point-and-click adventure, the other in a platformer. You can switch between the characters and have to make use of both their skill sets in order to succeed. It's a very specific gimmick, and the game might easily have fallen flat on its face if it weren't so funny and clever. It constantly references other titles, repeatedly breaks the fourth wall, and is sure to make you laugh out loud more than you thought a video game ever could. Lair of the Clockwork God is ridiculous in all the best ways, and is definitely one to check out. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite games are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.